right, welcome to the Code Hour. This is a special episode that I am publishing normally. If you're a regular subscriber, you know I knew I've been doing all these Xamarin podcasts. I've been doing about maybe 15 of them or something like that. And uh, tonight's going to be special. I'm just uh, publishing sort of a, a, a thing that goes along with a blog post that I did. And I uh, thought it would be fun to show how server communications can be broken using man in the middle attacks and how to protect against them. So that's what the, the blog post is. And so before we can get into how to protect against them, we have to talk about what man in the middle attacks are and, and how they work. And let's show it and take a look at it and see how server communications can be uh, uh, broken, basically. Okay, so imagine, let's, let's get right into this. Imagine that you've downloaded an app from the internet and you don't, maybe this is a Ring doorbell app, for instance, and I show that in my blog post, and uh, this is my blog post here, leeverson.com, and uh, here is, here's a sample Ring response, and one of the things that's kind of, well, we'll get into that, okay. <laughs> so, so what this does is, well, we don't really know yet. We're gonna make a, a request with uh, my username and a password. And we're going to log in. And uh, request failed. So it made a requ and it made an. Well, we don't even know this yet. It made a request up to the server, presumably. And we would like to look into a little bit more information about how that works. So what we can do is open Fiddler. And normally, when you open, when you install Fiddler by default, you do not get HTTPS decryption. So this would look like the following. We're going to see that we have made a. Let's take a look at the raw, the raw data over here. Oh nope. I'm going to restart it. Fiddler, when you turn on HTTPS and turn off HTTPS decryption, it does require a restart often, but not always. All right, so we're going to make a request, and this is what it's going to look like normally. It's going to say, we have made a request and we can see that we've made a request to https siren of shame.com and HTTPS decryption is disabled so we can't see what's going on inside of this request but if uh, okay yeah so here we go it says this is a connect tunnel through which encrypted HTTPS traffic flows so we've got the server we've got the client and there's a tunnel between them we can't see inside of that yet however there's a magic button here in Fiddler, where we can go to Tools, Options, HTTPS, and we can decrypt HTTPS traffic. So uh, normally, the first time you do this, you also need to, well, you don't have to, but you can trust the root certificate, Fiddler's root certificate. And when you do that, it removes all warnings entirely from any client who's making a request. They won't know that Fiddler is secretly initiating a man-in-the-middle attack and watching all of the communications that go on. Uh, so, so there you go. We're going to do that, that, and now that we've turned that on, let's try to watch what the request is. There we go. Okay, got a 200 request. It took a second. Got a 200 request. The response. The uh, 200 response. The request that we made up looked like this. First of all, we can now see that we made a request to this particular URL. We couldn't even see this before, but now we can see that we're making a request up to sirenshame.com API v1 verify credentials v2, and we're passing in a username and a password. And, and this is interesting. This is bypass authentication false. And I referenced this earlier, but in the Ring doorbell app, which is like an IoT app for your doorbell with a camera and all that. Um, when you download their app, they actually have a property just like this, and it's it's like, hmm, what what is that? What does that do? You know, maybe it was something a developer left in for testing, and they wanted to be able to maybe they if deft it out when it made it to production. But you can go in and fiddle with it, and uh, I think we should show that next. But but before we do. Uh, let's take a look at the response. So the response from the server was success false with an error of invalid username or password, which is what the app showed here. 
wouldn't it be cool if we could not only watch HTTPS traffic with our man in the middle tag, but what if we could modify the response as it's being returned back from the server? Believe it or not, we can actually do that with Fiddler, and it's not all that difficult. So what the way you do it, and let's just go ahead and do it, you go into the Fiddler script here, and I've already done a little bit of coding, uh, but Fiddler script is basically like JScript, and so I don't really know exactly what it is. It's so some kind of weird combination of uh, JavaScript and C Sharp. It's got types. I don't know, whatever. Anyway, so uh, I just have a Boolean, static Boolean over here, and you have uh, hooks that you can get. So there's a on before request hook, and before the request is made, I'm checking my my variable. Should I rewrite the request? And uh, also checking to see what the URL is. And if the URL is the Siren of Shame Verify Credentials URL, then I'm going to turn on buffered response true, which allows you to make modifications to the um, response. Okay, that was during the request. Then the hook for on before response, uh, I'm checking my variable again, and if the URL is the same, and then setting the color to green. So over here on the left, I can see that it's green. I can see that there was a, a modification that was made. And then I'm setting the response to success true. So let's save that script. And if this works, then when the client makes a request up to the server, the client is going to get a response that authentication was successful, even though it wasn't. Ooh, that worked. All right, so you just logged in successfully. And uh, notice this turned green. And it doesn't matter what I type. I could type anything in here. And there's, uh, there's, there's no, doesn't, doesn't matter at all. And, and if you doubt me, we can take a look here in, I've got this. Okay, okay. Turns out if you hit F9 in Camtasia Studio, it pauses the recording. Uh, so what I was trying to say was I could, try to uh, I could try to set a breakpoint right here and go back into my application and log in and and if you doubt me you can take a look in the response here and you can see that success was true and there were no errors for reals which is obviously not something a real server would respond with okay so that's what we should be protecting against. And if you load your favorite banking app and you have Fiddler turned on with HTTPS decryption turned on, um, I'm not gonna do it, but I about guarantee you that it will be protecting against man in the middle attacks and it will be shutting down who it's allowed to communicate with so that the certificate, even though it may be signed and even though it may be fully trusted, it will only allow communication to one particular server, and that's what certificate pinning is. And it protects against this kind of problem. So how do we do it? The, 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 the t there's, there's a typical way to do it. The typical way to do it, which I mentioned uh, in the blog post, is that you would, um, here we go, you would do it with a service point manager and you can say you can basically say for all requests in the application domain use this um, use this thing well we're in UWP land so for us if we try to do that maybe in the constructor it's going to say oh, what's a service point manager and uh, so you know we can't do that that approach doesn't work uh, but there is a more there is there's a different approach the more the, uh, the other approach you can do is when you create your HTTP handler down here. So this was, let's see, we're making a request. We're posting to server. Let me, let me zoom in <clears throat> a little bit here. Okay, we're making a post to the server. And this creates a new HTTP client. And we, we don't need to worry about all the details. But one thing is when you're creating an HTTP client, you can take as a parameter an HTTP message handler. So we can say new HTTP message handler. Yes, like that. And, uh, oh, this is abstract, isn't it? 
Yeah, we need, let's see, what are our options? What inherits from HTTP message handler? Our options are delegating handler, no, HTTP client handler, yeah, probably HTTP client handler. So we need an HTTP client handler like that. And then the typical way that you would respond to this with is a server certificate custom validation callback. And that allows you to, to uh, do a little bit of uh, a little bit of logic prior to making the first receiving the first response, I guess. No, it's actually during the um, HTTPS uh, back and forth. So let's see. Our server certificate, we're going to create a new method. And um, I should just tell you right away, this is not actually going to work. Normally what you could do is you could return false in here and that would reject all, that would reject all requests. So I'm gonna hit F5, run this and see if this works. There we go. And if I log in, what I get is actually a platform not supported exception. And it's complaining that nobody has implemented the server certificate custom validation callback for UWP. Now this code would work for Xamarin. This code would work for um, traditional .NET apps. It would probably work for uh, Windows Forms apps. And it would probably work on the server side too. But it does not work for UWP. So that's kind of annoying. And the, the only solution that I could come up with after fiddling around with this for a while was it turns out there are two HTTP client handlers. There's a cross-platform one, which is probably the one you're using by default. And that is in, that's in here, system.net. Well, our HTTP client, whoops, our HTTP client is system.net. H system dot net dot http dot http client. There we go. I know what I'm doing. I really, I'm a professional. Uh, okay. System dot net dot http is the namespace that we were using, and it's great for cross platform. You can put it into your dot net standard 2.0 code, or you can put it into a, a, a whatever, a, a library. But if you want certificate pinning, you're going to have to probably create an interface and use the other one, which is in Windows. Windows. Dot. H. Dot. Network. No. Dot. Uh, web. There we go. Dot web. Dot HTTP. Dot HTTP client. And you'll see that it actually the name is identical. So it's a little bit confusing. It doesn't have an HTTP client handler. It has, but it will take, oh, well, let's actually just try and get this working with the Windows Web HTTP client. So this, when we're trying to pass in content, it no longer takes a string content. Instead, this takes an I HTTP content. So, well, what inherits from I HTTP content, you ask? Uh, I forget. Let's figure it out. How about an HTTP client? Oh, that kind of makes sense, right? All right, so we need a new, and oh, and if I, HTTP client is abstract, so I actually looked this up earlier, it's HTTP string content. And it, it's gonna be somewhat happy, except for the parameters aren't right. We need a Unicode encoding here. So it's just a different enum, Unicode encoding UTF-8 and we're still passing an application JSON. That should work. Okay, all we've done so far is swapped out the cross-platform HTTP client with a UWP-specific version of it. And now, well, we're going to get success. Oh, success true, right? Because we're still doing uh, we're still doing our man in the middle or man in the middle attack. Okay, so, but we want that to say false. So, now that we've got that, this HTTP client takes something very similar to that previous filter. Um, in fact, the, the protocols are really, the APIs are really similar. So this is going to take a new, H, 
HTTP filter, so HTTP filter, and new HTTP, uh, eh, I don't know, what it, what, what do we need? Oh, HTTP, is that right? HTTP base protocol filter? HTTP base protocol filter. Yeah, that looks right. <laughs> Something like that. Okay, and now we need to we need to tie into the uh, when it's making the request and it's it's getting that certificate back. That's what we need to tie into. So there is an event here, which is called the server custom validation requested, and so we need to tie into that event. We're going to create the event down there, and we've got to be good, good citizens. And every time you subscribe, you should try to always unsubscribe. So let's do that right after we've made the post async request there. So we're going to now unsubscribe, and let's just let's just try to reject this. So to do that. We can take the args parameter and we can call reject on it. So if this works correctly, this is going to reject our uh, reject our request. So blah blah, and aha, com exception, a security problem occurred. That's good. And if we take a look back in Fiddler, we'll see there was a tunnel using making a request out here and it, it never even made the subsequent request. It was just during the handshake that it failed. So that's good, except for the fact that if I close Fiddler right now and I make another request, it's also going to fail. It's always failing. So we need to implement this correctly. And I'm going to start copying and pasting code down for my blog post now uh, because this is the, this is the magic. This is where it gets a little bit, here it is. Um, so this is basically just making a little helper method. Nothing fancy going on here yet. But there's a couple things we should do inside of here. One is uh, one of the parameters here and, and it would be really helpful if we could see everything. There we go. Uh, the last parameter is a list of errors. And if you have self-signed certificates, the list of errors here will be greater than one. So we definitely don't want that. So we're going to say if um, dot length is, or, or count, or whatever, is greater than zero. <coughs> And then return false. Oh, looks good. Uh, then we should probably also check the URL that we're making the request to. So if the if the uh, request URI is absolute, well, if it's not absolute, we should probably return false. Oh, is absolute. There we go. And then uh, we should also, we don't have to do this, but this request URI is probably worth doing dot request URI dot absolute URI dot starts with, and we should probably start check that it starts with HTTPS. And maybe this is a little overkill, but you know, a good starting point might be this is the URL that we're connecting to. And this is maybe a sort of a base a base URL, and maybe we should have a uh, base URL. And there it is. We've got a new constant called base URL, and we want to go down here and just verify that the URL starts with the base URL. All this is really going to do 
is verify if you have an app that makes requests to a couple different places, uh, it's going to by default reject anything which doesn't con connect to your expected server. Um, it's not strictly necessary, but it, it, it does tidy things up a little bit and it seems like a good default. So if you actually end up making another request out to, you know, jQuery or something like that to download some JavaScript, uh, this will fall, fail by default and, and maybe that's a good default value to, to have. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. And, oh, well that's odd. change type of parameter to HTTP request message. <laughs> okay, whatever. Uh, the last thing is the most important thing, and this is the trick. This is this is really where the magic occurs, because getting this, getting the, you can get, the, this certificate that you get back here, this certificate, is not an X509 certificate, which is what you would get if you were in Xamarin world or you were in Windows Forms world or something like that. So in order to convert a certificate and get the public certificate back out of it, there's a little bit of code that I had to figure out and it was it was not straightforward, but I'm just gonna copy and paste it. Boom, that'll get me my public key. Uh, I won't even describe it because you can read the blog post if you care about the details. But we're going to get public key for our certificate here. Boom. And that is the public key. And so now we should return that the public key is equal to some known public key. And this is what banks do. So, uh, and we should probably have a known public key const private const uh, string known public key equals Okay, that's going to fail, but what we can do is put a break I did it again. I hit F9 to create a breakpoint. Um, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to change those. Uh, I'm used to doing live live recording, and this is a pre-recorded with Camtasia, so I'm going to have to get used to uh, that, or or maybe change the short the keyboard shortcuts. All right, so we're going to run this and we're going to retrieve the public key. We could do this other methods, but this is super easy to do it this way. So, blump, blump. And now I can see that my public key is here. And obviously my known public key is wrong, so it's gonna fail right off the bat. So I'm gonna go over to the known public key and paste in what the actual public key is. Now, now we're done, we're done. This should work. Let's see, we're gonna hit F5. Hopefully F5 doesn't turn off my recording. And blah, blah, and I'm gonna log in. And this is probably gonna be true, hopefully. Get rid of that breakpoint. Oh, it made it through to success, so we know. It's gonna say succeeded, success was false, but it's not going to fail because we don't have Fiddler open, so this is good. This is better than we had before. And now we'll know this is a really solid if I open up Fiddler. I'm gonna make this request again. Boom, security error occurred. I'm gonna close Fiddler, try it again, and this time it worked. So there you go. We have certificate pinning. You've seen what a man in the middle attack looks like, and I hope that you've gotten to learn something and uh, had fun with security. So join me uh, on some uh, other date. If, you, uh, if you'd if you like to subscribe to the channel, it would certainly help me out, and I, uh, I would appreciate it. If I get enough subscribers, then I can change my channel name in YouTube, which would be super cool. So thanks for joining me, and have a wonderful uh, week or however long it is until I publish again. Cheers.